Yarn, welcome to Two Way Tables. Just before we get going, just a reminder that there is a notes shorter available for this video. If you just check the description below, you'll see a download link. Um, you can get the worksheet and you can work along with me as we go through the video. Okay, so just before we get going with this, um, just to explain what a two-way table is and why we use them. Um, you'll see one at the uh, bottom of your screen here. Um, we've got a table which has different categories going across the top and different categories don't going down the side. Now, these are all ways that a group of people have been categorized. Now, we've been separated out into boys and girls, and then each of those have been separated into people who walk, people who get the bus, and people who take a car. Now, that is the reason for a two-way table. When, group, uh, when a group of people have been separated up into categories, we need to place them uh, in a table in order to find out how many are in each individual group. So in this case, a class of 30 students are asked to state how they get to school on a morning. And of these students, eight girls said they walked, two boys get the bus, five of the 14 students who arrive by car are girls, and there are the same number of boys and girls. Use the information to complete the two-way table. Now, we've only actually been given four pieces of information, yet we have in our table 12 different boxes that we need to fill in. It doesn't seem to be enough, but if we take each little piece at a time, it will actually build up to a point where we can work out the individual values. And so the very first thing that we need to look at is the fact that there are 30 students. If there are 30 students, that is the total number of people, and it's our total total. So this 30 is actually the very final box, it's the total number of students altogether. We then need to look at the first piece of information. Eight girls said they walked. So what we need to do is we need to look at the girls and the ones who get the uh, who walk and find the point where they come together. And so the place where they both come together is here where there are eight girls who walk. There are two boys who get the bus. So here are the boys and here are the bus. So the place where they meet is right here. And so two will go into that box. And let's tick off the information as we've used it. The next piece of information is an important one. It tells us that five of the 14 students who arrive by car are girls. Now this is actually two pieces of information in one. It tells us that 14 students arrive by car. And so that is a total. It is the total number of students who get a car. And so we can go down from car and we can fill in 14 as our total. But what it's also telling us is that of those students, five of them are girls. And so in the car column, the girls must be five. And then the last piece, there are the same number of boys and girls. So we have 30 students in the class. If there are the same number of boys and girls, we just need a half that number. We have 15 boys and we have 15 girls. Now, as I said, we didn't seem to have enough information to fill in the whole table. But actually, what we've got now is enough for us to start filling in extra pieces of information by looking at the totals. If we think about the car, we know that 14 students come by car. Five of them are girls, so the rest must be boys. 14 take away 5 is 9. If we think about the number of girls, we know that in total there are 15 girls. Well, eight of them walk, five of them get the car, so that is 13 students altogether. The rest must take the bus, well, the rest to get from 13 to 15 is two. We can now keep going with the bus. We now know that two boys get the bus and two girls get the bus, and therefore four are in total. And finally, for the other two boxes, we've got a couple of options. We could look along the totals row. We know that there are 30 students in total, 
14 plus 4 is 18, which means we had 12 remaining. Or we could look across the boys row here. We know there are 15 boys. 2 plus 9 is 11, so there are 4 extra. And that means 4 plus 8 is 12. It works in every direction. We have completed the two-way table. Okay, so now that we have um, actually completed the two-way table, we may be asked some questions about probabilities. And so we need to be able to make sure that we can read from the table exactly what we are looking for. So our first question asks, one of the students is chosen at random. What is the probability that they walk to school? And so, because this is just one of the students chosen at random, the first thing we can say straight away is that our probability is going to be out of 30, because there are 30 students. Now, the probability that they walk to school. Now, it doesn't say anything about whether they are a boy or a girl, so the only thing we're interested in here is how many people walk. And so, that would mean 12 students. If we were asked, we might have to simplify these, uh, these uh, fractions. And so if we simplify, they can both be divided by 6. So 2 over 5. Next. One of the students is chosen at random. What is the probability that they are a girl who gets the bus? So again, one of the students is chosen at random. So we aren't told anything else about it. We are only, again, dealing with the 30 students that we started with. But it asks, what is the probability that they are a girl who gets the bus? So we're looking at the bus column, but we are told they have to be a girl. And so we're only interested in those two students who are girls who get the bus. Two out of 30, well, we can simplify that to 1 out of 15. And then, finally, a slightly more complicated wording of the question. One of the students is chosen at random. Given that they walk to school, what is the probability that they are a boy? Now, this phrase, given that, is very important. The fact that you have been told an extra piece of information, given that they walk to school, what that means is the only part of the diagram we're now interested in are these people who walk to school. And so our probability, instead of being out of 30, as it has been in the previous ones, it's now only out of 12. And the reason there are 12 students who walk to school. It's now saying what is the probability that they are a boy and therefore out of those who walk the boys there are four of them and so our probability is four out of twelve and again if we were asked to simplify we would do that by saying one third. Our third example um, is the situation where we've just been given the information. We haven't um, been um, even told in the question to draw a two-way table. Um, all that we've been told is that 100 members of a tennis club were asked if they played football or rugby, and of the members served, 30 were men, 8 of the 22 children played rugby, 45 played football, 20 played neither football or rugby, 17 women played football, there were four women who played neither, there were equal numbers of men and children who played neither, and one member is selected at random, given that they play football, calculate the probability that they are a child. Now, there is nothing here that actually says we must draw a two-way table, but the basics of it are the suggestion from how this question is set out. We've got people split into different categories. We have men and children and women, so those are the different types of categories for one section. And then we have people playing rugby or football or 
neither. And so we have two different ways that we are separating out our different people. And so that is a suggestion that the best way of answering the question is with a two-way table. Then we need to be able to fill in some values. So we need to go through our uh, information one line at a time. And again, the first piece of information that we have, there are a hundred members. And therefore, our total total is 100. And we were told that 30 were men. So that tells me straight away that the total number of men must be 30. Done. Eight of the 22 children played rugby. Well, again, this is one of those pieces of information where we've got two bits in the same element. We were told eight of the 22 children. That tells me that my total for children must be 22. And eight of them play rugby. So eight of those children play rugby. 45 played football. So the total of the football column must be 45. 20 played neither football or rugby. So that is 20 in the total column for neither. 17 women played football. So in the football column for women, we have 17. There were four women who played neither. And there were equal numbers of men and children who played neither. Now this one's going to take a little bit of working out. We know that 20 people played neither. But four of those were women. So 20 take away 4 is 16. And those 16 are equally spread between men and children. So we just need to do a little division. 16 divided by 2 is 8. So there were 8 men and there were 8 children. The rest of the table is now going to come from us doing a little bit of working out. So let's start in the total columns, just so we can see how many women we have. There are 30 men and 22 children. That is 52 in total. So 52 taken away from 100 would leave me with 48 women. If we continue in the women row, we know that 17 play football and four play neither. So there are 21, but in total there should be 48 women. So 27 are left. If we look at the total row, we have 45 playing football, 20 playing neither. That is 65 people. But we know there has to be a total of 100. And so there must be 35 who play rugby. Using that information, 27 women and 8 children, that makes 35 in total. So actually, we have 0 men playing rugby. If we stick with the men, 0 play rugby, 8 play neither. And in total, we have 30 people though. And so 30 men, take away the 8, is 22. And then in order to get our final value, we can use either the football column or the children row. The children row, we've got eight playing rugby and eight playing neither, that's 16. And so we would need another six to get to 22. Or if we use 22 plus 17, that is 39, we would need six to make it up to 45. We've completed the two way table. Now this on its own has not completed the question. We've got a question about probability to go. So one member is selected at random, given that they play football. So straight away, I'm just going to highlight the piece that I'm interested in. Given that they play football, means that we're in the first section of the table. So, how many, uh, how many people play football? There are 45. And of those 45 people who play football, how many of them are children? 
Well, there are six. So our probability is six out of 45. If we are asked to simplify, well, we would divide both of those by three. So that is two out of 15. There is our final probability. And finally, we come to our exam question. It was from the Edexcel paper in November 2017, and it was in foundation paper one. Um, Emma has 45 rabbits. 30 of the rabbits are male, 8 of the female rabbits have short hair, 12 of the rabbits with long hair are male. Use the information to complete the two-way table. So straight away, we have to look at each of the lines of information that we've been given and see what we can fill in. Emma has 45 rabbits, so that is the total total. So 45 in there. 30 of the rabbits were male, so the male total must be 30. Eight of the female rabbits have short hair. So in the female section, eight will be in the short hair section. And 12 of the rabbits with long hair are male. So of those ones with long hair, 12 of them are male. And again, it looks like we don't have yet enough, uh, enough information, but let's just have a quick check. Well, we can work out how many females there must be because there are 30 males and 45 in total. There must be 15 females. Knowing that, we know that eight of the females have short hair, so seven of them must have long hair. In terms of the males, we know 12 of them have long hair and there are 30 in total, so that would need another 18 with short hair. And then the totals for each type of hair, 12 plus 7 is 19, and 18 plus 8 is 26. And if we just check that, 19 plus 26, it is 45, therefore we've got our three marks that are available. We're then asked about probability, so one of Emma's rabbits is chosen at random. What is the probability that this rabbit is a female with short hair? Now, this question does not use the word given that. And therefore, we're dealing with all 45 of the rabbits that we began with. So the probability is going to be out of 45. And we're asked that they are a female with short hair. So we need to be looking at the female column and we need to be looking at short hair and the place where they meet is at 8 and therefore 8 out of 45. 